Jack Daniels, world barbecue champion, and this is Barbecue Central. So to get that perfect barbecue, you use wood. Are you sure it's safe? Whatever. We put the lighter fluid on, strike the match, and... Oh! Should we call the fire department? That might be a good idea. Good evening and welcome to the Really Big Barbecue Central Show. This is the show that talks about all things important to the world of barbecue and grilling, broadcasting live and direct from the Rock and Roll Hall of Fame city of Cleveland, Ohio. It is the barbecue capital of the North Coast. I'm your program host, Greg Rempe. Happy to have you aboard here on your Tuesday. You want to jump in tonight? More than happy to have you. It's a phone call, 216-220-0966. You can also email the show, greg at thebbqcentralshow.com. Anything else you want to find out about the show can be found at the main website, thebbqcentralshow.com. And here's what's happening in case you didn't get the newsletter. Coming up in about 13 minutes from now, a guy that is current uh, that is actively getting into the groove of becoming a recurring guest. He also happens to show up on the second Tuesday of each month, although not the traditional second Tuesday of the month guest. He is the keeper of the flame at AmazingRibs.com, and you know him as Max Good. He'll be in 914. Now, depending on how far we get in our conversation, there is a substantial chance that he will actually carry over to the 935 section, uh, pulling off uh, his own interpretation of Meathead Goldwyn. Meathead will not be on the show tonight. No. I got a call from Meathead at about uh, three hours ago, 6 o'clock Eastern, and he's like, hey, I'm in LaGuardia, plane blew a tire, at landing. Which sounds really bad, but having been in the airline industry for a couple years, you know, not that big a deal. When the landing gear comes out and it's twisted the wrong way, a little bit more of a concern. But blowing a tire, you know, who cares? It happens every day. No big deal. But you got to get it fixed before you can take off again. So it sounded like there was a a very good chance that we were going to be having Meathead at like back of the cab. Best case scenario. And uh, this way, he's able to to get where he needs to go safely. Doesn't have to worry about doing the show from the back of a cab or wherever the hell he was going to be doing it from. In his place, Max Good will be talking about pellet cookers tonight. Extensively about pellet cookers. So if you're new to the show, if you've been thinking about getting into the pellet world or that industry or niche or adding that kind of a cooker to your arsenal you have found the right show tonight my friends because it's all about pellets and pellet cookers to be more specific the 10 best pellet cookers out there on the market so stay tuned for that then in the second hour at 10 14 there is a great product out there especially if you like pizza on the grill kettle pizza which has been out for i think a number of years now has been doing very well Kettle Pizza's founder, George Peters, will be on to announce their new product, which I'm teasing right now. I'm not going to talk about it specifically, but if you know anything about the original Kettle Pizza item, it goes on charcoal grills. You build kind of a charcoal slash wood fire. Um, We'll get some pictures up if you haven't seen it before, but I mean, it's all over Facebook on the sponsored posts and, you know, a lot of other social media areas and gotten a lot of attention over its lifespan so i think the next step or the next product line that is being offered very logical one you could probably guess but we'll talk to george peters about that this would be his second time on the show and finally at 10 35 nick edwards barbecue treat.com will be joining us i don't know if i had mentioned it on this show a couple weeks ago But BBQTreat.com 
is a subscription-based service. Well, not solely a subscription-based service, but uh, it does have a subscription side to it. It also has like a one-time gift box situation on it too. I think obviously their goal is to have way more subscribers than the one-timers because you want a hit every month for that consistent generation of revenue. But we'll talk to Nick Edwards about the concept, why he thought barbecue subscription service was something that could exist in the marketplace right now. I think if you listen to the radio right now, there's a lot... One of the more popular things over the last 24 months has been subscription-based services, not just TV or radio like a Sirius Satellite or something along those lines, but there are subscription services for clothes now. There are subscription services for prepared meals or giving you all the ingredients where you have to prepare the meals. Subscription-based services have become very popular. So Nick Edwards jumping into the fray there. So that's your show tonight. Nick Edwards, George Peters, Max Good, all locked and loaded this evening. And don't forget, you can uh, take this show in a number of different ways on the main website for the audio, OutdoorCookingChannel.com for the video. Roku for video as well if you have the uh, Outdoor Cooking Channel app downloaded through your app store there. Uh, Yes, I am wearing my Cleveland Cavaliers shirt loud and proud. Coming clean to you, as I always do, my prediction of six games? Well, no. Didn't happen. I think it's safe to say a lot of people didn't think the Cavs were going to win in Golden State last night and push a game six back here in Cleveland on Thursday evening. And I happen to feel pretty good about Cavs coming back home to win game seven. Anybody's call. The Cavs are going to be triple motivated if they can win i i feel worse about thursday's game than i would feel going back to golden state to play a a a seventh and final game i would feel more confident with that game believe it or not dear greg listener email by the way dear greg i've been listening and watching the show for years i just saw the replay of last week's show great show as always but i was wondering that if Jess Pryles is going to be a regular guest on the show and will be on video most of the time, is it possible to get her in better lighting? She's not very hard on the eye, so seeing her better wouldn't be the worst thing to happen to your show. Just my two cents. I'm sure I'm not alone. Ted in Oklahoma. Ted, thanks for writing in. Ted, uh, lonely much? Let me tell you something. Unless a guest approaches me about their post-show appearance and is asking for feedback, I'm not going to give them unsolicited critiques uh, ever. I personally think that would be a bit rude. Remember Ted in Oklahoma. The people who come on this show who are my guests are donating their time. So... That's all I'm really going to ask them for in return. If they come on the show, I ask them to talk passionately, be a good guest, be entertaining, blah, blah, blah. Show aesthetics isn't first or perhaps even fourth on my list of things that I am concerned about while the show is happening. Maybe lighting is your thing, Ted. Maybe it is. Now, have there been guests that have asked me for feedback? Sure. And at their request, I am happy to give them insight on what I thought could have made the interview sound sound like audio quality-wise a bit better or look a bit better, things like this. But I am not going to tell someone they need better lighting so Ted in Oklahoma can see you better. I mean, come on, man. Give me a break, bro. Uh, Anella, the check's in the mail. Right? Isn't that the saying? Check's in the mail. Ted, Ted, stay classy, bro. I don't want to ban you from the show, but, you know, I'll ban you from the show. If that's what it takes. I've been known to ban. All right. uh, 216-220-0966. Greg at thebbqcentralshow.com. Those are your two bits of contact information. 
We have Max Good coming up out of the break to talk about the top 10 pellet cookers. And also, I think it's going to be good to get a little insight from him since he's kind of in that, you know, um, non-biased, non-sponsored type of thing on, you know, where he feels the pellet cooker market has come from and where we are today and perhaps where the growth over the next two, three, four, five years might be. So that's Max Good coming up next. But first, I'm going to talk to you about Butcher's Barbecue. You know, there's a number of things that David is contributing to the marketplace right now that can really help your barbecue stand out from the rest, whether you're just a backyard guy like me or whether you are on the competition scene or thinking about getting on the competition scene. Uh, you know, these are the things you're going to want to consider for purchase to help you ramp up the learning curve. Of course, we know Butchers has the great injections. Everybody knows about them. Most people are using them religiously. Some people have tried them, gone away, realized the folly of their ways, then come back. Because remember, if you've bought somebody else's injections commercially made and you realize that the scores aren't where you thought they were going to be now or you're not getting the high fives from the crew across the street, things of this nature... You were dumping cash before, and you were just kind of host. There was nothing you could do about it. Dave actually has a trade-in link on his website where you can hit the trade-in link part, print off a label, and then send your commercially made injection that isn't his to Dave. He'll weigh it and then send you back the prime injection or the bird booster or the pork injection or the beef injection, whatever you want. He'll weigh it and then send you that weight back in return with his products. Nobody else in the industry is doing that right now. Now, of course, you have the go-to rubs and the sauces, the things we talk about each and every week. And then, you know, the product that I think is one of the most revolutionary to have graced the market over the last 24 months, the grilling oils. What I really love about the grilling oils is the fact that they are shelf-stable. You don't need to put them in the refrigerator to make sure they don't go rancid or anything like that. You just leave it out right there in the kitchen. You can bring it out to the grill or the smoker with you as well. So it's always in front of you. As I said before in the past, you put it in the refrigerator, there's a very good chance you might forget about it the next time you want to use it. Just not you know, out of sight, out of mind. This way, it's always in front of you. you got three different flavors to choose from. you got the butter flavor, which is my favorite. you got the steakhouse flavor. You also have the chipotle flavor. There's a bunch of stuff right now at ButcherBarbecue.com that you should be getting your hands on to get that grilling game and barbecue game stepped up to the level you are hoping to achieve. Again, the website, ButcherBBQ.com. That's ButcherBBQ.com. Butcher's Barbecue. Always trust your butcher. Thanks to Dave Bosca and the gang over Butcher's for literally years and years of support and sponsorship through the show. ButcherBBQ.com. All right, we're back with Max Good right after this. Stick around. We'll be right back. Broadcasting live from the Barbecue Central Radio Network Studios in Cleveland, Ohio. You're listening to the Barbecue Central Radio Show. Once again, here's your host, Greg Rampey. Welcome back. This portion of the show being brought to you by the Sam's Club National Barbecue Tour. 31 cities, $500,000 in cash. Eternal bragging rights if you win the whole damn thing this weekend. The Sam's Club Tour rolling into Hendersonville, Tennessee. A formal, uh, former regional location, if I'm not mistaken. For local qualifying events, to keep up with the Sam's Tour results, to see where the next events will be, I don't even think you can register your team anymore. It's probably all locked up. KCBS.us. That's KCBS.us slash Sam's Tour. Sam's Club in their second year of sponsorship to the show. All right, last visit we talked about the top charcoal grills, gas grills, and smokers on their 2016 AmazingRibs.com list. Tonight, we dial in specifically on the pellet cookers, their origin, the rise to popularity, and, of course, the 10 best cookers out there on the market today. At least seen in the eyes of my next guest, the keeper of the flame at AmazingRibs.com, 
and growing regular guest here on this show, Max Good. Max, how are you, buddy? Hey, doing okay, Greg. Good to be with you again. Uh, Max, are you watching the sh- Wait, hold on a second. This is me. Oh, boy. Shame on me. I was watching my own show in a different browser. Forget about it. I fire myself. Uh, Max, go ahead and uh, poke your camera there so we can get a shot of your face, too. Is it? Uh, well, well, I thought it was working. Hey, up. Oh. I yeah, see. For some Still reason, used it, to uh, this butt. Oh yeah, that's all right. All right now, hey, that ain't me. No, that's not you. <laughs> Let me. Uh, what did I do with the thing there? All right. Well, we can just do this real easily. And the Skype Two. video. And there he is. That's me. Hey, there he is. He's got the shirt on. Look at this guy. Got an upgraded microphone. Solid. Oh yeah. Solid man. Looking good. Look at that. What is that microphone? A uh, Yeti. The Yeti. Yeah, I got a, a recommendation from somebody who really knows a lot about this, Greg. Oh, good. Well, that guy Well, that's has... you, right? Oh, absolutely it was me. <laughs> hey, if people are interested in sounding good, I have I have some recommendation. Not everybody wants to bone out a little bit of money here and there, but if you're going to be on the show regularly, why not sound good and look good? And if you can't look good, why not sound good, right? Some things we can control. I can't control not looking good. This is the way I was made. Blame my mommy and daddy. That's what I say. I'll help you work on that. All right. Well, thank you. I, well, you know, one hand washes the other, I think. <laughs> All right, Max. So let's talk about we're, we're going to be delving into, you know, pellet cooker dumb here over the next segment or two, depending on, you know, how we get through the first segment here. So I'm wondering from, you know, your perspective, we're going to be talking about the 10 best pellet cookers out there on the market in terms of how you're rating them or reviewing them. But from where Pellet Grill started all the way back in the day, and the name brand or the Kleenex brand at that point was Traeger, and I still think mm-hmm. that, you know, that name recognition is still there. I don't know if if the the fuzzy feeling has returned yet, and I know there's been some ownership changes over the last, you know, five, ten years or whatever it's been, but... That's kind of where pellet cookers were born out of. Are you surprised from where Traeger started low those many years back that you would have seen this many manufacturers out there in the market in 2016? I wouldn't say I'm surprised. I'm actually more surprised that more people don't own them because they're fantastic. Um, but uh, And I should say that uh, whenever we do a list of 10, we are invariably get people saying, how come you didn't include my favorite product? Because there's only room for 10. There's a lot of great stuff out there. But, you know, uh, try to give you a price range and, and a range of different features as well. Do you think that there has not even been a scratch on the surface of popularity of pellet cookers? Or do you think that there's still not a lot of recognition or just awareness that pellet cookers are out there and are a viable option to put on the, on the patio or deck? Awareness is growing. Uh, currently, according to a recent survey by the uh, HPBA, only about 2% of the households in the United States have a pellet smoker. But the good news for the pellet smoker industry is that, according to this same survey, of all the people who intend to buy a new outdoor cooker this year, 2016, 7% of those say that they're interested in a pellet smoker. So the word is getting out. I think it's happening one backyard at a time. When you go to a, a friend's place and you go, my God, how did you make these ribs? And they say it was easy. I just set the temperature on my pellet smoker just like I do in my kitchen oven, went and screwed off and watched the football game, and four hours later these ribs are done and they're fantastic. Do you have any idea like where the manufacturers are looking to, I mean, obviously everybody wants a hundred percent of market share if at all possible, but I mean, the numbers that you're throwing out percentage wise just seem incredibly small, 2%, you know, uh, of these people, 7%. I mean, it's not even like 15 or 20%, which would seem to be a huge increase if you were able to go to that number. If we were talking in 2017 at this point next year, that would be like, one of the, the miracle increases of business ever. Is there is there a possibility that you think you could see a, a 15 or a 20% market share of all pellet cookers dominating in the country, or is that really a, a lofty goal? Uh, I, I believe it will happen, maybe not this year, but within the next few years. Uh, I do think the word is getting out. Traeger still dominates the market 
They probably about eight out of 10 pellet smokers in service today are Traegers, but that is changing. A lot of people are stepping up and giving them some very uh, stiff competition. Is Traeger doing it right? I know they went through a, quite a, a turmoil time or a, a, a time of turmoil, if you will, when the patent ran out and then there was the, the original ownership kind of selling out and then there was like the whole China thing. And I think there was a lot of bad feeling about how the product was led for a little while. And now you have the new ownership, which I, I don't know if they're guys that are really considered to be barbecue guys per se, but uh, I think their vision and what they want to restore Traeger to is definitely admirable and, and things that they're working to bringing back and, and restoring that good feeling about the Traeger name. How do you kind of view them as a corporation right now? Well, I mean, they're obviously they're doing something very right because they still by far and away own that segment. Um, I do believe that they've kind of uh, rested on their laurels to some degree. They do have a new product coming out called the Timberline, which will be a big step up technologically from their current lineup. Uh, they're kind of hard to communicate with, so I, I don't know as much about them as, I, as I'd like to know. And maybe it is because they're, going, they're in the state of flux at the, this point in time, but I couldn't even tell you that. All right, so uh, as we begin going down the list of the top 10, uh, can you give, a, or give me kind of a, an idea of how you rate these? What, what's the checklist look like in order for you to put a grade on these and, and what makes a list and what doesn't? Well, I'm very price sensitive, as I think you, you're uh, learning. Um, so I started out with uh, the, the brand that I believe is probably gives you the most value for your money coming into the entry levels. And they are a brand that you like that sponsors your show. But uh, I'm not saying that I like them because of that. I honestly do like them, and they give you a lot of value. And that is Green Mountain Grills. Um Nope, that's, oh, what's that? Yeah, I got to get my uh, screen right here. Keep going. <laughs> uh, at any rate, um, they've always offered uh, some good technology and advanced ideas. Uh, from the from the get-go, they had um, uh, touchpad controllers uh, with uh, uh, not only a temperature control for the cooking inside the smoke box, but they had an integrated meat probe. So... And, and their price points were rather low. Now they've dropped their prices even further. And uh, the idea behind it is they're trying to get people to feel like, you know, this price is so good for another hundred bucks, I'm gonna go Wi-Fi on this. The Wi-Fi is still an option with their setup. And what Wi-Fi does is that means from this little smoker, this is a little portable one, the smallest one they make, Davy Crockett, and you can get this for about 350 bucks. Uh, if you get spend another fifty dollars on this little guy, you can get Wi-Fi and you can control it and monitor it from your smartphone or your tablet. It's pretty cool. Should one associate lowering of prices in any way with a lessening of product? Well, I mean, you know, they, these are made in China. Uh, about half of the models on this list are made in China. And we constantly hear many people who have a prejudice against that who say, oh, that's cheap. It's cheap Chinese stuff. Well, you know, the Chinese can make really good stuff, but they make what their customers ask them to make. And in this case, uh, the folks at Green Mountain, who are, are a very good company, good customer service, they care a lot about their customers, um, they're just trying to make something at a certain price point. And indeed, that's why I have uh, the first two slots on this list with their grills, their little portable guy, and then this mid-sized Daniel Boone, because um, they're very affordable. And that is one of the big impediments uh, that people in the consumer space have against uh, pellet smokers right now is even a that little portable guy. It's like 350 bucks. You know, and some people don't want to spend 300 bucks even on a gas grill. So uh, the price is a big issue for the pellet smoker industry. I appreciate uh, when a company can bring some good quality in at an affordable price. Uh, that's, and it, it's, it's extra important, I believe, 
when it comes to pellet smokers because they have technology. They have electronics. They have auger motors. Uh, they just plain cost more than a basic gas or charcoal grill to make. Max Good joining me here on the show from AmazingRibs.com. In regards to uh, ability to hold food, you know, how much are you looking at in a, a Daniel Boone and how much are you looking at a, at a Davy Crockett portable type unit? Well, the Davy Crockett uh, is limited in size, <laughs> um, but you can put a small turkey in it. You can put a brisket in it. You know, um, it's, it, it is small, but a nice thing about that that many of our readers I find appreciate is they like buying it to have as an ancillary device, particularly if they have no pellet smoker. Some of our readers have more than one outdoor cooker. They might have a gas grill, a charcoal grill, maybe a gas grill and a Kamado, something like that. But, uh, you know, they, our readers are a bit more into this, shall we say, than many. So uh, they're a little uh, more open to spending the money. And if they're curious about a pellet smoker or they just don't need the capacity, you know, maybe some retired people living in a condo, that's a nice little unit for them. What about on the Daniel Boone? Is that more of a traditional, you know, like a couple pork butts or, you know, a really big oh, old you, packer brisket? Or what are we looking at capacity-wise there? Yeah, yeah. I mean, you that's that's more like a mid-size uh, smoker. Uh, you, you can do bigger, big turkeys on it. Uh, you'll notice it has their characteristic kind of peaked hood. It gives you quite a bit of headroom on, on that unit. Um, you know, but it's, it's, it's medium size. Um, there are larger ones on this list. All right, so uh, those are your Green Mountain Grills. And then the next one up, you have, uh, as you call it, the pioneer of the pellet smokers, the Traeger Little Tex Elite. Is this the one that we're seeing on the infomercials as well with uh, Daniel, uh, Daniel Bennett and uh, I think it's probably the, the, the chef guy for Traeger as well? Uh, you know, I haven't seen those, uh, so I couldn't comment. Uh, they do make quite a few models. Some of them just basically have different cosmetics to them. Um, as you mentioned earlier, you know, pe people complained when they shifted their production to China. Uh, and something I like to point out about Traegers is we hear a lot of complaints about them, but we hear a lot of praises about them as well. And that's simply because <laughs> most of the pellet smokers out in people's backyards are Traegers. You know, when we talk about China, let me back out just for a second. Is it more up to the person that's making it. If you've made the decision that, hey, you know, we would love, I think it's by and large it's safe to say that if a company can make something in America and make it affordable and also make a profit, and those two don't seem to always go hand in hand when you're keeping all that labor here, that you everybody would rather do that. But once you've realized that you're either not going to make it where you want to in the business side of things by keeping that production here and you're going to move it off, and you get to China, is it up to... The people, let's say it's me making, you know, barbecue central pellet grills. Is it up to me to make sure that the people that I've sourced in China are, aren't going to make their own recommendations on how I can cheapen it and that I am really pressing, I want this thickness of this and this kind of metal and this, that, and the other thing so it's as American-made as it could be in China, if that makes sense? Uh, well, you do, talking to different manufacturers that manufacture in China, they all tell me you need to be very watchful and maintain strict standards. Um, the Chinese have a variable workforce. People travel all around. So certain factories, you know, that you, let's say you made one batch, you made your 2016 models, you come back to do it in 2017, a lot of the people working there weren't involved the year before. Now, a big company like Charbroil, they have a lot of people on staff and, you know, they, they, they're just cranking this stuff out all the time. And indeed, they make, uh, they make grills for other companies and uh, other brands as well. All right. So uh, in regards to the Traeger Little Tex, what do we like about it? Well, it's just, uh, you know, they're dependable. They're, you know, uh, they, they're the guys that started it. Uh, it has an older-fashioned dial controller on it which is not as nice as the touchpad. It doesn't have an integrated meat thermometer, has no wireless capability, but it's just a basic unit that works fine. Uh, it is thermostatically controlled. I point out in this article, for serious eats, or we're always honored when 
Kenji uh, asks us to do anything for his prestigious website. Uh, but as I point in, in this, this article, um, the thought escaped me as I went off on Kenji there. Um, it's, it, 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 oh, I know what I was about to say. Because they are so big and they're established in the market so well, uh, you can find these pretty much everywhere. Yeah. Uh, and, well, everywhere that you're going to find pellet smokers at any rate. And that also means they're always running specials on them. So if you keep your eyes open, yeah, you can get pretty good deals on Traegers. All right. So we're looking at, uh, at least on the thing here, 600 bucks or so roundabout, unless you're finding a, a decent deal on one, maybe on sale somewhere. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And sometimes they'll... Uh, 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 make a package deal. They'll keep throw in some bags of pellets or, you know, some other little goodies as well. All right. So the next one that we have up, uh, and as you write, Easy Clean Camp Chef Pellet Grill and Smoker DLX. I have never heard of this. Well, you've heard of Camp Chef. Never. Never heard of Camp Chef? Never heard of Camp oh, Chef. Oh, man. They're the, they're the kings of, uh, of camping and that kind of stuff. They make all kinds of outdoor... Uh, you know, all types of outdoor equipment. They make stuff specific to camping and uh, sports-related outdoor cooking. But uh, they have some very good pellet smokers, and a really neat innovation they came up with for this one is um, uh, the way pellet smokers work is they have a fire pot, and the computerized controller feeds little pulverized wood pellets to that fire pot, uh, as needed to maintain the temperature that you've set. Uh, well, you know, it doesn't, they, the pellets don't generate a lot of ash, but they do generate some ash, and you periodically need to clean that thing up or the dang thing won't even start. Right. And to clean it up, you got to take off the grate, take off the uh, drip plate, take off the heat diffuser, and yep. you got, now your hands are all greasy and nasty, uh, and then you got to vacuum it out. Uh, well, with this camp chef, it has a unique design that allows you to uh, open up the bottom of the fire pot and the ash drops down into a removable cup. Huh. You still have to periodically uh, do everything that I just said <laughs> and clean it out, uh, but you don't have to do it as often. Uh, and that's kind of a neat feature. Plus, it does have the dual uh, function controller. As you can see, there's a little wire there. That's the, the meat temperature probe. Um, I'm actually testing one of these right now. They have a, a, a neat uh, new option for it. Uh, you see that side shelf coming off on the right side? Yep. Uh, the, no, that's the oh, hopper. Sorry, that's where right the here. Yeah, the, on the right, right side, side. there. Yep. Uh, you can remove that and put a small gas burner on it. Oh. And that's kind of neat because pellet smokers, for the most part, aren't great at grilling, although they, most of the manufacturers say they're grills. Uh, they're, they're really... Great outdoor ovens, uh, great smokers. Uh, they can get pretty hot. Most of them can get pretty hot, and there are ways of goosing up the temps a little. But I thought that was kind of a neat idea, and um, it's it's fun to play around with. All right. Uh, Max Good joining us here on the show from AmazingRibs.com. Uh, Max, can you stay over for one more segment? Sure. All right. Uh, stand by. We'll come back, and we'll finish out this uh, top 10 list of pellet cookers. So if you're interested in learning a little bit more, stay tuned. We'll be back with Max here in just a few minutes. I'm going to tell you about another cooker right now. The pit barrel cooker. That's right, folks. Uh, if you have been thinking about pulling the trigger on a new cooker, it can be nerve wracking sometimes. I get it. Temperature control, fire management, what woods to buy. Who needs the hassle? Might I strongly suggest a pit barrel cooker? The Pit Barrel makes cooking simple and fun, and it just might be the most unique, versatile, and easy-to-use cooker available on the market today. Imagine a single cooker that will turn out great traditional barbecue meats like the briskets, pork shoulders, and ribs of the world, while also being able to ramp up in temperature and do those burgers, chicken wings, and hot dogs. The versatility is thanks to the revolutionary design that goes beyond traditional convection. Their hook-and-hang method places the food in the center of the heat, so it's like a ro uh, stationary rotisserie, if you will. The result, great tasting, perfectly cooked meat each and every time. In the industry, we call it consistency. Not only is the pit barrel a fabulous cooking vessel, it looks great. It can withstand heat thanks to the porcelain enamel finish. The pit barrel is also able to stand up to any type of weather. It's extremely portable. It can fit in the back of most vans, trucks, and SUVs. It's ready to go wherever you are. 
Of course, all barbecue folks love accessories, and the pit barrel doesn't disappoint here either. From rubs to the unique removable ash pan to the pit grips, the turkey hangers, the hinged grill grates, it's a full line of accessories that will really complete your pit barrel experience. And the best part of it all, for $299, the pit barrel comes fully assembled, and it's ready to cook on right now. And it ships free right to your door. Don't take my word for it. The folks at AmazingRibs.com, like Max himself, give the pit barrel a top 10 rating in their gold division. That's the highest rating, by the way. Not only once, not twice, but three years in a row. They've said, quote, we're running out of good things to say about this simple, affordable smoker. There's nothing else like it on the market, end quote. Head on over to PitBarrelCooker.com. That's PitBarrelCooker.com. See what everybody's talking about. Be sure to check out their full line of short how-to videos that are shot in high definition as well, then pick up a pit barrel or two for yourself or one for you and your neighbor. Who knows? You'll thank me later. If you have any questions, you can contact them directly through their website or you can call 502-228-1222. 508-228-1222. And yes, they will actually talk to you. Human beings, probably Amber or Noah, might pick up the phone and talk to you, answer all your questions. Find out what the great customer service is all about. PitBarrelCooker.com. That's PitBarrelCooker.com. All right, uh, we'll be back with Max Good finishing out the top 10 pellet grills on the market. Coming up right after this. Stick around. We'll be right back. Smoke. Call 877-448-0433 to get on the air. Now, here's your host, Greg Rampey. Welcome back. This portion of the show is being brought to you by the aforementioned Green Mountain Gross. Manufacturers of some of the best pellet cookers out there on the market. Big ones, medium ones, small ones to take on tailgates. They also have pellets to help you fire all or any of those cookers. You just head on over to GreenMountainGrills.com. Again, that's GreenMountainGrills.com. I love my Green Mountain cooker. Love yours as well. Go get it if you don't have one. Trust me, it's on AmazingRibs.com. Top 10 pellet cooker list. What more do you need? Run now! All right, Max Good is joining me, and we're talking about pellet cookers. Odd how that happened, by the way. (laughs) Nevertheless, uh, we continue on here, and the next one up, is the Louisiana Grills Country Smoker CS, as in Charlie Sierra 450. And I'm uh, well, no, I, I know Louisiana cookers or Louisiana grills, but I haven't really seen this barrel style. I'm more used to that gas grill looking one that they offer. Uh, well, they have a lot of different models, and uh, not only do they go under the Louisiana name, but they have a new low cost uh, brand called Pit Boss that uh, is much less money than the Louisiana models, but it's not as good. But, eh, you know, once again, as I said at the top of this, I appreciate when a company brings something in um, that's affordable, particularly when it comes to pellet smokers. Um, This one has an interesting design because most of the pellet smokers have a drip plate that's angled right underneath the cook surface. And you'll see on this one, there's a little bucket under there. That's pretty typical. The grease uh, drips down the angled drip plate that's under the cook surface and drips into a a little bucket like that. Uh, A lot of these Louisiana models and some of the uh, less expensive Pit Boss models don't have a flat drip plate. It's arched. Uh, It kind of um, mirrors the shape of that barrel-shaped lid. Now, the folks at Louisiana claim that this allows more surface for drippings to sizzle and impart deliciousness to the foods. I'm, I, I, that's that's kind of hard to quantify, but um, uh, I, I'd have to say a downsize of, of that design is they don't recommend that you cover it with aluminum foil. Oh. Uh, I'm not quite sure why, and I haven't tried doing it on, uh, on, uh, on the models that I've tested. Um, but uh, an interesting point. This also has an interesting design that's not really unique to them. 
um, that is supposed to help you actually do some heavy duty searing. It has a sliding plate on that drip plate uh, that exposes open slots right on top of the fire pot. So when you slide that over, you get pretty excited because you can see that fire from the fire pot. But alas, <laughs> my hopes were dashed. <laughs> They're not the only ones either uh, that have this type of design. And it just plain oftentimes does not work well because the fire pot is small. And there's only a small amount of flame that you can expose anything to. So, um, you know, you, you have this little maybe hamburger size area that you can really get some flame on it. And uh, otherwise, it's there are better methods of searing with with uh, pellet smokers. I, I we'll don't... talk about some others down the down the list here that work better that have a similar idea. All right. I won't jump out of line here. So uh, the next one is uh, Rec Tech Grills. And this is a brand that I've been seeing more and more of. I think there is a lot of action on it, both in the uh, the pit club at amazingribs.com and i've seen it all around a bunch of different uh forums and websites and all this uh you know how do you guys feel about the rec tech oh i love it and uh, this is an example of something that's made in china but very well made in china uh the fit and finish on it are very good uh, obviously it looks cool i mean how can you not like that you know it's got those shining micro polished uh <laughs> bullhorn handles it's just cool but it's it works great you know it really works great it's rather large for about a thousand bucks you get a lot of bang for your buck um and it has a really sophisticated pid controller that'll probably hold your temps more steady than the your kitchen oven will is it a uh, hopper in the back the hopper is in the back yes and it's a large hopper 40 pound hopper wow um, most su- of them are around 20 pounds you, for you, a medium and full size. Are you surprised that more manufacturers of pellet grills haven't gone to, I mean, in America, bigger is always better. So you have a lot of the 20 pounds, as you've said, or maybe 25, but are you surprised you haven't seen more 40 pounders available? Uh, I guess it hadn't occurred to me to the larger units. Uh, and many companies do make larger units like Louisiana and Traeger. They'll make, they make, uh, uh, smokers that you can put a whole hog in, you know, uh, and they do have larger uh, hoppers. Some of them have two fire pots. Um, so I, you know, I think that it exists out there, but, uh, I, I, uh, when I tested this one, all I could say is it just plain work great. Uh, really well made when I was putting it together, all the fasteners were very heavy duty. Uh, you know, you just, get a sense like, wow, this thing is nice. And a lot of the guts are stainless steel, which means they're going to last forever. Stainless steel grates, stainless steel drip plate, and heat diffuser over the fire plot. I guess you can tell. I like it. Yeah, I mean, it sounds like uh, you know, you're pretty over the moon about it, which is good, obviously. That's why it made the list. Um, now, here's one that is super popular. Uh, a lot of people on the competition scene like uh, the Yoda brand pellet cookers. A lot of people in the backyard are becoming... Uh, more and more averse to getting this on their decks and patios as well. Uh, the Yoder YS, as in uh, Yankee Sierra, YS640. Yes. Uh, well, it, uh, one of the unique things about the Yoder pellet smokers is their super heavy metal construction because Yoder is known for their big offset smokers. Yep. Um, and they make some, the, some of those big submarine-type smokers you see on uh, on the barbecue TV shows and, and at competitions, uh, they use very heavy gauge metal on these things. And uh, they have a beautiful, uh, sophisticated controller that's proprietary. Uh, it, it, and and you'll, no, you'll notice there's at the top there above the lid, that's a counterweight because that's something you see on the big competition right. offset smokers. Yep. Because the lids are big and heavy, right. and they want to counterbalance them to make it easier for you to lift them. Uh, a really cool feature with this, and I was belly aching about how um, how pellet smokers aren't very good at searing. Uh, if you see under there's there's a you can see there's a shelf on the right there under the chimney, and you write that little handle there. That's um, oh, I forget what the lingo they use it. It's it a uh, it's a a plate that will 
you can pull it all the way out and it allows the heat to run evenly throughout the smoker. But if you push it in like it is now, it isolates the heat right over the fire pot, which is directly to the left, right next to that, the controller and the hopper on the left. And moreover, uh, you can purchase uh, one of your favorite options in mine, Greg, uh, Grill Grate, the uh -huh. aluminum extruded aluminum cook surface that gooses up your temperatures, on, no matter what you're cooking on. You put one of those above the fire pot after that damp d displacement I feel, I'm sorry, I can't. Let me see if I, I got this written down. What do they call it? They call it a variable displacement damper. Uh -huh. uh, when you shove that all the way over there and, and isolate the fire in the fire plot and throw one of these aluminum grill grates on top, you can do, really do some nice searing on that baby. All right, so this is one of the cookers then that is really not only saying you can grill on it, but you can really grill on it, and you have the space and the access to a, mm -hmm. a decent-sized mm -hmm. fire pot to do it. And, but I'd have to emphasize that they, they put a couple of elements in place to make this work, but one of the main things that I've found uh, that helps you um, sear on a pellet smoker is conduction heat. Uh, when, we, when we take a look at the next one, the famous Fast Eddie Morin's, uh, cook shack pellet smoker uh, that's the way he accomplishes it but he does it with a cast iron grate all right and that's the pg 500 which we mm -hmm, talk about mm -hmm. on the show each and every week as well there's also a pg 1000 yes yes uh the 500 uh you you can see uh, that that small door to the left is is where there's a um a cast iron grate right above the fire pot and uh, again, I want to emphasize that you're mostly getting conduction sear. You're, you're getting gr um, grill grill marks. You're getting you know grill grate marks on it. It's not uh, an even brown surface, which is uh, which is preferable. Uh, you're really just getting that searing from the conduction heat coming off the cast iron grate. Now, uh, one of the things though that I really like about Fast Eddie's designs is, and I'm not quite sure exactly how he does this, but Everything I tested on this guy uh, came out with a beautiful, well, smoking now, uh, came out with a beautiful mahogany finish. And I immediately said, this reminds me of what I see at competitions from the guys that really know, the guys and girls who really know how to operate their smokers, their offsets and all that. Uh, and, of course, Fast Eddie is an award-winning guy, so uh, he, he knows how to do it. This has several different zones. It also has a warming tray at the bottom there on the right, and then there's an ash tray at the bottom on the left. Um, it has uh, two levels of cooking. Uh, if, you, if you're over the sear zone on the right, you can sear. If you go to the, to, I'm sorry, it's sear zone on the left or the lower level, and then on the right is where you smoke, and then it has um, two grates, uh, two upper grates that'll, provide um, different temperature profiles for you as well. All right, so uh, that's obviously another good one. Uh, then yes. we also have uh, one that is really won awards uh, ever since it has been introduced to the market, which is uh, the Mac brand of pellet cookers, and this is the one-star general that you have on the list. Yes, yes. Uh, we love Mac. They came out with a controller that just blew every, the doors off of everyone's. Uh, now this thing does everything but um, – but the dishes after you're done cooking, uh, you can access it anywhere in the world uh, via the internet to monitor or change temps. Now, um, I, 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 practically speaking, you might want to do that. Let's say you're at work, you're downtown at work, and you're getting on the train and yeah. you're checking. Well, hey, maybe this thing got got done a little ahead of time. I'm going to drop it down to 180. Just hold it. Uh, but you can also program the the controller to do that if you have a certain recipe like i want to cook at um two two twenty five for three hours then i want to goose it up to 350 to brown the the meat surface a bit then once the uh meat probe tells the controller that it hit the desired internal meat temperature you can program it that it will drop it down to a holding temperature uh price wise on this is this one of the more expensive ones then uh, you can spend more, but it is it is a it is not a cheap one. But you know it, it's very well made. 
Uh, they're a great company. They'll stand behind their products. They have a few new ones coming out now that are very interesting that I got to uh, I got to throw them up on the website. Um, they have a, a, a very interesting portable uh, smoker that um, regenerates its own power. Uh, so you don't have to, once you the battery is, is charged, you don't have to plug it in. It just keeps recharging itself. Interesting. All right. So uh-huh. uh, the last one on the list uh, this evening is the Memphis Elite pellet smoker and this thing obviously is just like a stainless steel piece of uh, majesticism which of course is not a word but uh, you know i said it so whatever i like it uh, what do you i mean wow all i can say is wow yeah i and i mean uh this is a luxurious grill this yep. thing runs about four thousand six hundred bucks oh uh, yeah but it's it's a beauty and it has a lot of wonderful features like similar to what we were talking about with mac it does have a, a sear zone uh, that works very well. Um, it's it's advanced technologically. It's built beautifully out of very high quality three hundred four gauge three hundred four grade stainless steel. Uh, but you know because of the price point, it's not going to be for everyone. But if you have the dough and you have a beautiful outdoor stainless steel kitchen already in place, you want a pellet smoker. Oh, this will this will Fit right in. <laughs> All right. So, in regards to the list, um, are there any other? Can will you make a change at some point during the year, or is this just like a, a once a year release? And you know, you're working on next year's list, or how does that work? It's a once a year thing. Um, you know, and uh, Kenji has asked us to be involved with uh, these type of articles two years in a row, and we always love getting the call from him. Uh, he's he's a a, a wonderful wonderful uh, cook and chef. And his recipes are fantastic. Wonderful. All right. Uh, we're talking with Max Good from AmazingRibs.com. He is the keeper of the flame. And if you are interested in checking out the full list of the 10 best smokers, go to SeriousEats.com. And I'm sure you can. Is it on AmazingRibs.com as well or a link well, or something like that? Well, we, we have a, our top 10 residential smokers for 2016 list. Uh, but it wasn't dedicated to pellet smokers. When I was speaking with the folks at Serious Eats, I suggested we do something with pellet smokers because I do feel like uh, they're turning a corner and we're going to see more and more of them. All right. So uh, SeriousEats.com, and then you can probably search the 10 best pellet smokers, and that article will come up and review it, see what you like. Max, as always, I appreciate the time, my friend. Good job filling in for your buddy Meathead, and hey. uh, we will see you again next month. It's my pleasure, Greg, anytime. All right. There he is. Max Good, and with a new microphone. Look at this guy. He's taking uh, everything to heart. I'm like, hey, you want to sound better? These are some suggestions. Booyah. So, again, SeriousEats.com has that. I mean, it's a ridiculously long link. Actually, if you are in the chat room right now, here is the link. And there you go. So share that around or look at it, whatever you like. Um, AmazingRibs.com, Max's website. All right. Oddly enough, we're going to be talking about another one that he had just mentioned. Uh, this is Cook Shack in general, but we are going to be talking about the uh, PG and the FECs as well. Cook Shack manufactures smoker ovens for barbecue lovers with any amount of experience, whether you barbecue in your backyard, in the competition circuit, or in a five-star dining facility. Cook Shack has a unit that will do the job, and with a full line of barbecue sauces, spices, pellets, and wood chunks, it's the perfect one-stop shop. Cook Shack strives to be your barbecue resource center by offering cooking classes, online recipes, how-to videos, two blogs, smoking and grilling 101s, and a video classroom. Check out their website, cookshack.com, or follow them on these social media platforms, Instagrams, Facebooks, YouTubes, the Twitter, Pinterest, and Google+. Does anybody use Google+. Get advice or share your passion for barbecue in their world-class barbecue forum. Cook Shack pellet-fired smokers are the choice of champs because they're made and designed by a champion. Ed Fast Eddie Morin, the FEC 100, and the PG 1000 are always customer favorites. 
The PG-1000 can double as a smoker and a grill. Low and slow or hot and fast, the pellet line gives you the most for your money. Cook Shack Residential Electric Smokers are the number one smoker in the industry. High quality means high durability and versatility. Anything that you can cook in your oven, you can make in a Cook Shack. Passion and dedication drives Cook Shack's manufacturing. With quality always being at the forefront, get the best in barbecue since 1962. Call 800-423-0698. That's 800-423-0698. Or, again, visit cookshack.com. All right, let me try this. Oh, Matt helped me out there. Sorry, Matt. I thought I sent it to the team. I sent it to you. I wanted you to have it first, Matt, okay? I wanted you to have it first. I like you the best. All right, uh, we are back to wrap up the first hour right after this. Stick around. We'll be right back. Interviews, advice on cooking brisket and ribs, and the only host willing to share his honest opinion on all things important in the world of barbecue. It's the Barbecue Central Show. All right, welcome back, 216-220-0966. Greg at the thebbqcentralshow.com, your two bits of contact information should you see fit to jump in tonight. Let me see, I got to All right. Quick email from Grillocracy's founder and overlord, Clint Cantwell. We're good. We're good to go. We're good. We can do it. I don't have enough time to get into... I didn't know how much length length we were going to have with Max on that second segment, but filled it. I had something that Craig Sherry had posted to the IBCA group page, which on a high level, I think every competitor needs to hear, and I personally agree with exactly what he said. And it doesn't happen all the time, but in some instances it does happen, and I think it, it that needs to be put out. I don't know about you, but Clint Cantwell just might be my favorite person in the world right now. Absolutely. Love that guy. You know how many people have never said that about me, Clint? What you just said? I'm not gonna, you know, brag on myself because of what you said, but you all right maybe i can get to it in the top of the second hour we're going to uh reload here for the second hour lots to get to we got nick edwards coming up at 10 35 we got george peters coming up at 10 14 kettle pizza so if you're interested in learning about kettle pizza and the new product which we'll be talking about here yes stay tuned for that if you want wood pellets to fire your cookers, you go to cookinpellets.com. That's cookinpellets.com. You can also purchase them on uh, amazon.com as well. Yeah. The number one source for wood pellets, cookinpellets.com. All right, uh, we'll step away. We'll come back and get into the second hour. You want to jump in? Happy to have you, 216. 216- 2200966 or the email greg at the bbq central show.com. You're listening and watching the Barbecue Central Show right here on the Barbecue Central Networks. Stick around, be right back. Hi, this is 
This is Bobby Rempe from Cleveland, Ohio, and you're listening to Barbecue Central. Happy to have you aboard here for the really big barbecue show. Boing. We cook because we have to, and we grill because we want to. Hit me. Fine. How's it going? You have a great show. I'm a big fan. Boing. So what? What? What seems to be the problem here? This man looks like he's dead, and he's in the in the crackle. Charbono. It's all about the Charbono, dude. Succulent fish. What? We ate two feet before we nerfed. Delicious, Laverdius. Shit feast. I'm shaking like a dog shit peach seed. <laughs> we have top men working on it right now. Top men. All right, just like that, we are into the second hour. hey You have found the Barbecue Central Show. That's right. We talk about barbecue and grilling stuff here every Tuesday. And we do it from Cleveland, Ohio. Home of the East Coast Cleveland Cavalier NBA champions. I didn't say that right. Home of the East Coast Eastern Conference champions and hopefully NBA champions by some point over the weekend. Got to get through Thursday. We can do it. I know we can do it. Still to come on the show tonight, George Peters from Kettle Pizza and Nick Edwards, barbecuetreat.com, 216-220-0966. Your phone number, greg at thebbqcentralshow.com, is how to get in touch with the show. The Sam's Club National Barbecue Tour rolled into Harrisburg, Pennsylvania this past weekend, a local qualifying event that feeds the North Charleston, South Carolina regional final. And the top six teams moving on are Grand Champ, Checkered Flag 500 Barbecue with a 683.3. And I remember when that used to be a high score. I mean... Absolutely no disrespect intended to checkered flag, but 683, like nowadays, that's... I remember when that was like the bomb. You were the man back then. Reserve Grand Champ Wolf's Revenge Barbecue 672.4. Low and Slow Barbecue with a 665.0. Smokestack Redemption 663. 270 Smokers with a 662. And Poke and Smoke is rounding out the top six and going into that regional with a 661.6. Now, let's go ahead and take differentials between one and two. Almost 10 whole points. So as we look at it, and then we say time and time again here, a 10-point differential in a barbecue competition, absolutely huge. So congratulations to Checkered Flag for a dominant performance. Absolutely. And then... Between second and third, there was almost another 10-point difference. So uh, quite a ranging gap. I mean, between one and three was 22 points. I'm sorry, between one and six. 23 points. That's huge. Checkered flag, getting it done, man. Absolutely fantastic. Congratulations. The next Sam's Club stop coming this weekend, June 18th, Hendersonville, Tennessee. Good luck to all those competing. And let me say this as a programming note for next week. Uh, there will be no live show next week. Get that big stuff out of here. I'm going to be in Orlando, Florida for what will be finally the last J.O. volleyball tournament of the year. This is the, uh, I call it the fake nationals. This is the one where I just get to pay to get entered and fly everybody down to Florida to play in not the Nationals Nationals for volleyball. The real Nationals Nationals took place this past weekend in Indianapolis. Uh, We did not get a bid for that, so we weren't allowed to go. We weren't invited. We were invited not to come, actually. We got the invitation. You're invited not to come. 
All right, folks, so I want to hear from you on this. Everybody in the chat room, get ready to weigh in. It's yes or no. Anybody that's listening in podcast after the fact, which will be put up at 11.55 this evening, and then you take, in, you take it in however you consume it. This is an email from Joe. Greg, it's time we talk about the fifth annual World Championship Cookoff for Squirrels. Our event is the biggest wild game cook-off in the land. The land? And features top teams from KCBS, SCA, the State Cook-Off Association, and other groups of competitive cooking. The event has been featured on the Travel Channel, Wall Street Journal, CBS Sunday Morning, and rank a top 10 culinary event by USA Today. This year's prize money, $1,000 for first, $750 for second, $500 for third, and 16th place will pay $500. What? 16th place. We average 40 teams from coast to coast who compete for the title of the world of the, I'm sorry. We average 40 teams from coast to coast who compete for the title of true world champion. The rules are simple. 80% of the meat must be squirrel. Two and a half hours to prep the entire, I'm sorry, two and a half hours to prep the entree and side dish. There's a panel of qualified culinary judges. And there is no pre-prep of meat or ingredients. Everything has to be done there right at the table within that two and a half hours. The event grows every year, has become a staple in the community, raising money for vets and children. Past dishes include such delicacies as squirrel and waffle, barbecue squirrel Memphis style, squirrel sushi, squirrel pot pie cooked on a big green egg, squirrel slider, squirrel sausage, squirrel confit, and squirrel boudin, etc. It would be a great spot on your show if we can discuss the event, possibly obtain a new A few new teams from your broadcast. Please contact me for further information. Visit our website, squirrelcookoff.com. If you think it's a joke, like I'm going to rickroll you, uh, believe me, my friend, not a joke. (laughs) President of SQU, the World Championship Squirrel Cookoff, is Joe Wilson, squirrelcookoff.com. So the answer that I'm looking for is... Does the squir- the world champion squirrel cook-off get a segment on the show? It's yes or no. You tell me. Yes. You tell me. No. Get that big stuff out of here. There's two no's right off the bat. Matt Boer asking a good question. Do you have to shoot your own squirrel? Can you go, like, can you just go to the store and get squirrel meat? I don't think that's readily available. I think squirrels are rodents. Clint Cantwell, ye old squirrel cook-off, the finest feast in all of the land. Uh, Yeah, welcome to the world squirrel cook-off, the finest event in the land. Please kill your squirrels and bring them to my contest, where I shall pay you one thin gilder for the winner, and the rest of you will be beheaded for your inferior squirrel cooking capabilities. Please come to the squirrel cooker. All right, there's three other no's right off the bat. So in the chat room, it is not going well. We'll see what happens in the podcast. Remember, way more listeners listen to the show after the fact. John Dawson weighing in through email. Greg, the big question is, how does one get bite through skin on their tree rat? (laughs) You know, that's the big question, I think, in all of this is how does how what's the legal way of obtaining said squirrel? Uh, I don't hunt. And. I guess I could probably ask my father-in-law or my boss. You know, they like to... I think my father-in-law used to hunt squirrel back in the day. I think my boss actually might hunt squirrel regularly because he's on land out in Michigan. So if if you're interested, go to squirrelcookoff.com. 
We'll see how this particular poll weighs out, and maybe we're going to have uh, Joe Wilson from the World Championship Squirrel Cookoff on sooner than later to talk about a true world championship. Are teams coming from all over the world? Because that makes a true world champion. I mean, just because it's open to anybody doesn't mean that everybody from all over the world is coming. Everybody from all over the world comes to the Jack Daniels World Championship Barbecue Cook. We'll see. Joe, your hand or your fate is in the hands of the Barbecue Central Lights. Uh -oh. Yikes. I will let you know how it goes. Here's the other thing that I wanted to talk about. I'm not going to get to it either. All right, uh, we're going to be joined by George Peters coming up out of the break. Kettle Pizza, a popular item. Clint, how long has Kettle Pizza been out, like on the market? Five years? I think I had George on the show once, many years ago, when Kettle Pizza was, like, first hitting the road. We'll get caught up with George here in a second. I'm going to talk to you about the CHOPS Power Injector System, the NBBQA Tool of the Year, 2015 and 2016. That's two years in a row if you don't know how to count. The number one seller is the half-gallon CHOPS Power Injector System designed for competition or to pump up the Backyard Warrior. Easy to use. Clean it, fill it, pump it, and go. If you have just one brisket or pork shoulder to do like I did over the weekend and I used my CHOPS Power Injector System, you don't need to fill it all the way. I didn't. Just put in what you need. It will use it all. Comes with 14 gauge needles, two placement plastic needle adapters, three plug screws, and a needle protector. 100 bucks plus shipping anywhere. The one gallon chops power injector system is designed for the bigger cater jobs. Some use it in competitions like when you cook the MBN whole hog, or maybe you're doing 10 shoulders to get that perfect one. It comes with 14 gauge needles, two replacement plastic needle adapters, three plug screws, and a needle protector. 120 bucks plus shipping anywhere. And then you have the Chops Full Power Injector System, the commercial and competition Big Daddy. It's not a holding tank like the other two, but a three and a half foot pickup tube that you can put in any size container. From a few ounces to a 55 gallon drum, it was designed for Chef Rob at the best barbecue restaurant in Kansas City. And he said time and time again that with the Chops Full Power Injector System, his briskets are better than ever. It comes with a metal needle adapter, 14 gauge needles, three inch, 12 gauge needles, two inch, 11 and a half gauge needles, three plug screws, a needle protector. It's 325 bucks plus shipping. A number of the top pit masters in the world use CHOPS power injector systems every day to make their barbecue better than everybody else's. Here's the thing. We live in a foodie world. Got to use the CHOPS power injector system to infuse flavor in every bite. That's how you do it fast. It's not just for meat. How about alcohol-infused watermelon or anything you want to put alcohol in? Maybe you want four needles mainlining vodka right into your body. You could do that, too. You'd probably die if you did it. However, you could do it. Every injector hand-assembled right there in Kansas City, Missouri, USA. Extra accessories. If you want them, they got them. Want to shoot medium ground spices, they have you covered for that. They have two, three, four-inch, 12-gauge needles. Also, they have a two-inch closed-tip needle, perfect for shooting fatty meats to keep from plugging up the needles with fat. They sell replacement stock needle adapters and plug screws. They have a great upgrade you can buy to make your chops injector bulletproof. Metal needle adapters. How about that? BarbecueKansasCity.com. That's BarbecueKansasCity.com. B-A-R-B-E-Q-U-E, by the way. Dan Uledal killing it with the Chops Power Injector System. By the way, Doug uh, Doug Scheiding was asking where we were playing. Uh, we'll be playing in the uh, Orange County Convention Center. Unless we seed really high, then we might get over to ESPN. But right now it's the OCC, Southside. Stop by, have fun. All right, we're back right after this. Broadcasting live from the Barbecue Central Radio Network Studios in Cleveland, Ohio. You're listening to the Barbecue Central Radio Show. Once again, here's your host, Greg Rempe. Welcome back. Hey, yo. Oh, I'm way ahead on my reads. Wow. Is this going to work? John Dawson sending me the perfect squirrel sounder for the championship world squirrel cook-off. Let's hear it. Is 
gonna happen. No, it's a video. We do it. All right, that was horrible. <laughs> I, 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 I mean, what the hell was that? I thought I was gonna hear like a dee -dee 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 or something. I can tell you what I didn't hear. That weird. Pizza is one of the most popular items that we eat in this country. It's one of my favorite foods ever. Making pizza at home is fine, but on the grill is a continually growing market. My next guest invented the kettle pizza and has something new to bring to the market. Let's go ahead and race to the hotline and welcome back to the show, George Peters. George, how are you, buddy? Recording a voice message, all right. Working out well. There's George right there. Hey, George, how are you, buddy? Hello, George. George? Yeah, all right. And we'll try that again. I'm going to keep the sound down. Of course. So I don't want to have you hear the ringing. Hmm. Well, that's not good. No, George. Wait. Calling in on the hotline. George Peters. All right. George, how are you, buddy? Hello. George. Am I having an internet issue? Unbelievable. If you could see my Skype screen, it's giving me incredible amounts of hope. Or they're like, oh, we're going to call you right back and this, that, and the other thing. Call quality information. There's a problem with this call. Yeah? What do you think the problem is? Well, there's nobody there, of course. Hello? All right, let me try George one more time, and then uh, we'll figure it out from there, I guess. The person whom you're trying to reach oh, is currently unavailable. Please leave a message. On I love her voice, by the way. So here's what I wanted to get to earlier. It seems I have some time. Wait. All right. Maybe I don't have time. George. What the F? So here's the deal. I don't have his phone, or I don't have his, uh, uh, please forgive me. I got to get to my phone thing here. I have his phone number somewhere. Unbelievable. All right, stand by here. I'll get him on the phone. All right, so now we're going to see if this works. So I'm actually using the uh, old telephone, as it were. So we're going to ring him on the phone. That's not... I'm going to try one more time. Dot, dot. Dot, 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 dot. I'll fix this in post, by the way. 
Nobody wants to hear the blank spaces. It's like the worst. Kevin Bevington was worried that I might go over two hours because of next week's shot. Don't worry. No worries there, buddy. No worries. By dialing star 82. Oh, boy. Man, I got no phone. I got no Skype. It is bizarre as it gets. What is going on? All right. Well, we'll probably have to reload George at a different time. I don't know what the deal is here. We will press on. Uh, also, in, in, in lieu, I give Clint the hotline number for him to call in at. So for those of you that uh, compete, I don't have to tell you that uh, competing in the barbecue circuit is uh, expensive, to say the least. And for the shot at winning some kind of prize money, you know, that's something you look for. You, you want to get some money back. You want to get it, if you will. And Craig Sherry posted, so that's like the, you know, the, you get in, I mean, you want to be around your buddies and you're cooking to see if your barbecue is better than the rest. But there's a lot of expense that goes into barbecue. There's a lot of specialty items that people are getting now that they weren't getting in the old days. So right up front, before you even get to the cooking part, you've laid out a tremendous amount of money. I don't think it's out of line to say it is a tremendous amount of money. 700 bucks, 1000 bucks, 1200 bucks, whatever it is that you're doing every weekend that you go out to compete. It's a lot of money to do it, hobby or not. A lot of money, absolutely. So to go to a barbecue competition... Uh, if it were me, I would want money or the opportunity to win money back so I can recoup some of my losses, try and get to that break even or the black side. Craig Sherry writes this post on the IBCA group page about 24 hours ago or so, and it reads as such, and I quote, Fellow cooks, this past weekend I saw something in an event that I feel needs to be shared. You may or may not agree with what I have to say, but it's something that needs to be dealt with. As a friend of mine says, from time to time, your mileage may vary on the topic, but that's okay. We all have opinions, and this is mine. The subject is donating back prize money. Well, on the surface, this might appear to be a great idea. Reality is just the opposite at a barbecue award ceremony. What happens most of the time is some folks donate because they feel they don't need the prize money or just because they like the charity that's being benefited from the barbecue competition. The problem is other folks start to feel guilty or pressured that they have to do the same thing. And in some situations, the crowd starts to chant, donate it back, and the cause, and that causes more conflicts. The truth is the crowd usually has no idea what you have invested as your cook or your needs for your family. They don't understand what you have, uh, that you earned the money, and it's yours to do with it as you please. Some cooks who may not have the financial struggles, don't always get it either. And I think that it's something that needs to stop. A cook should never be made to feel guilty for not donating back prize money. Then there is the other side of folks that don't see. Some cooks make private donations before or after the awards, donations or personal things, and some folks enjoy their privacy. The audience should accept that. Unfortunately, they don't always do that. Most have no idea how often or in how many ways we donate time or money just because you see some cooks once or twice a year at an event. You have no idea how many events we have attended. Many 50-50 tickets we have purchased, how many silent auctions we've entered, how many t-shirts we've purchased, and the list goes on and on. So the message is to any cook that finds themselves in this position, accept your prize money, you earned it, and hold your head up, you deserve it. And if you feel the need to donate it back, then do so after the awards privately. And the rest of the cooks and their friends in the audience that don't get it, get over it. Well said. Well said. I mean, there's no reason. There is absolutely no reason that if you're a competition cook, that you should ever be made to feel like you have to donate the money that you earned in that competition back. Unless you are solely going to that competition to donate back whatever money you earn or win, 
You should never feel like you have to donate that money back. You earn that money. You paid a lot of money to get your ass out there, cook and win, whether it's a category or an overall event or whatever. So I agree with Craig Sherry 100%. And if you want to donate the money after the fact, do it privately. That way the guy behind you doesn't feel like some kind of shithead because he doesn't want to donate the money back, but you did it, and now he feels like there's already been a precedent set. You don't want to do that either. Keep the money donated back privately, but don't ever feel bad about taking the money you earned. Never. Feel good. Your money. All right, I think we have George Peters on the line. George, how are you, buddy? Oh, no. I'm doing absolutely fine. I'm glad we could finally connect. I'm not sure exactly what the deal was, but uh, with the uh, limited amount of time that we have left in the segment, I want to talk to you, uh, I guess, A, for the folks that aren't up to speed on Kettle Pizza, you know, just a little bit of background about, you know, the flagship product and why you felt there was kind of a need to to get it to market. Well, when my uh, business partner and I, Al Contarino, Al had the original idea he hit upon the idea that there were probably millions of kettle-style charcoal grills out there. He grew frustrated with trying to cook a pizza on the grill without losing the heat every time he lifted up the lid, and he thought he could come up with a better way. He got in touch with me. We made the first one in his workshop in his barn. We tested it. It uh, turned out okay. We got some positive and negative feedback from some uh, very well-established barbecue grilling people out there that were also pizza experts. And because it's an American-made product, we could make running changes to the kettle pizza um, and improve it quite rapidly. And we came to market in first tested in April 2010 and then hit the ground really in January of 2011 and since then, we've shipped to people in 55 countries. So the overall success of the problem uh, of the product as it sits right now uh, has exceeded expectation, or has it kind of met up with what you were hoping to achieve? I think it's certainly exceeded. We have um, been blessed with getting some tremendous feedback from our fans and customers who continually share updates and pitches from around the world of many food items beside pizza cooking in the kettle pizza oven. Uh, We have our stones and our peels all made in the U.S. We have six different kits. We started with one, and we have continually evolved into new accessories around the stainless steel insert of the kettle pizza oven. Uh, George, the the primary or, or the two fuels that should be used, I mean, it's not just charcoal. It's a mixture of charcoal and wood, or can it be both uh, separate one, specifically wood, and or, or just one charcoal? Um, certainly our preferred method is, um, you know, starting with Kingsford original charcoal and adding fist-sized chunks of hardwood, oak, maple, pecan, hickory, That certainly spikes the temperatures inside the kettle pizza dome and around the stone we get consistent seven to eight hundred degree temperatures with adding six to eight pieces of hardwood and then as the temperature begins to drop after oh probably five or six pizzas you can just add more hardwood and uh, cook one right after another. So you have the insert that kind of sits uh, atop the grill grate, if you will, and then uh, the the dome that comes with the kettle would sit on top of that. So it's almost like you are, you know, creating that uh, Italian pizza oven feel uh, and, and kind of capturing that, that top-down cooking effect, right? That's exactly right. The It's certainly the alternative of having a uh, a pizza oven in your backyard that you would have to spend several thousand dollars uh, or more and that's the last place it's going to be is in your backyard if you went to that expense we created the uh, you know portable and affordable alternative to that uh, you know very large pizza oven in your in your backyard and be able to adapt them to three different size uh, kettle grills, an 18 and a half, a 22 and a half, and with our expansion plate, 26 and three quarters, we have one 
one item that fits those three very popular uh, kettle style grills. And as long as you have one of those sizes and it's not a hinged lid, uh, you can put it on all of those sizes and have some great success with it. George Peters joining me here on the show talking about Kettle Pizza, the website kettlepizza.com. So obviously with the success of the original or the, the flagship item, it only makes sense to offer something to the other side of the fuel. It's not charcoal or wood, but uh, you guys have uh, just introduced the the gas option, right? Yes, we launched it uh, via Facebook on June 5th, something Al and I had worked on for a couple of years, trying to trying to capture that heat that's given off on a on a gas grill into a smaller chamber to recreate uh, the oven effect right on top of, of the grill grate. And from early indications from our fans and customers, we have done that. We've made 100 of them. Uh, we've gone through those as of uh, today. We've gone through most of those already have been shipped out the door to customers uh, all over the country, and we're waiting some feedback. One of the advantages we certainly have, as I said, making it here in the States is that we, uh, you know, we listen. We understand our customers are very important. So any changes or recommendations, you know, we can get it right back into the workshop, make design changes, and then get some more made to see how those are. We don't have to wait for thousands of them to come back from overseas. And from the success of the kettle pizza for charcoal, we have uh, numerous customers around the world that want to buy American-made products because they know that you know we don't make junk here in this country. So we're very proud of that, and we hope the success of the kettle pizza charcoal oven and the Gas Pro, we think we have a winner that we now can cover charcoal grills and gas grills and you know offer people that alternative that they've been looking for so you have you know the original product and you have the fire kind of pushed to the back and it's doing that whole rollover thing with the gas grill the fire is traditionally underneath the the grill so how do you is there any different way you have to set it up in order for it to work effectively or is it all burners on high or you know how's the the operation work Quite simply, um, we designed it for a grill with three burners or more. We knew that that was going to have to be the minimum that people would have to have to get the steel to a high temperature and the stone to a high temperature. We, 10 minutes, and turn up your burners high, put the gas pro on, close the lid. 10 minutes later, open it up, slide your stone in, another 10 minutes to heat the stone up and you're ready to cook pizza and then you leave the lid up so then you can see the pizza all the time slide it onto the stone and in about probably less than seven minutes you have a pizza ready to eat price point wise uh you know the original kettle pizza and then the new uh, gas version The charcoal kettle pizza ovens, we have kits, a basic kit starting at $139, going all the way up to $450 with our Serious Eats uh, stainless steel, um, with a baking stainless steel with it. comes with all of our accessories that we've created uh, with the kettle pizza oven. We've introduced the Gas Pro edition of the kettle pizza. We have a basic kit starting at $249 and the top end model at $299. George Peters joining me here on the show from Kettle Pizza. So if you don't have a charcoal grill and you want a Kettle Pizza, if you want pizza on the gas grill and you want this option, you've been waiting for the gas option. It's now available. KettlePizza.com. Are they available also like in brick and mortar retail or is it just, you know, mainly on website, George? Uh, right now, Greg, we're going to introduce them on our own website, kettlepizza.com, um, and our own Amazon seller site. 
as probably the next uh, three to four months as we produce another couple of hundred that will be coming down the pipeline uh, as soon as we get some start to get some more feedback. Uh, we don't know about directly into retailers yet. We'd like to take our time and to make sure that we have perfected the design and we're getting positive review back from our fans before we release it anywhere else. I think it'll be uh, could be some time before we release it to any retailers. And we ship direct all over the world now, so it'll be readily available to anybody who uh, wants to give it a try. All right, there it is, George Peters, Kettle Pizza. Again, the website, kettlepizza.com. George, really appreciate the time. Uh, sorry for the technical issues there up front. but uh, Yeah, I think the, the Skype gremlins grabbed us here in Massachusetts. They show up every once in a while, no doubt about it. But continued success with the product, and we'll talk to you soon, George. Greg, thank you very much. You Great show. There he is, George Peters. He's not kidding, man. Those Skype gremlins will come up, punch you right in the balls. You saw it. You just saw it happen. I'm like, man, what is going on? It's like, it's especially frustrating when you can hold two interviews previous to the getting all jacked, whatever. Let me talk to you quickly, folks, about the longest-running sponsor of the show located in Warminster, Pennsylvania, the Barbecue Guru. Gang, if you've been thinking about automatic pin temperature control technology, and there's different options out there other than the Barbecue Guru, why are you going to buy from somebody else that isn't the barbecue guru these are the people that created automatic pit temperature control devices so stop here buy here the website of course the bbqguru.com and uh you know a bunch of different models to choose from here's the deal maybe you are a busy working professional like me or you know you're a stay-at-home parent you got a ton of kids you take them to the pool now in the summer or you're running around taking them to day camp, whatever the case may be, and you just don't have the time because you have a bunch of other stuff to do. You can't sit around, throw logs in the fire, make sure the charcoal doesn't run out or keep those temperatures where you need them to be to really optimize the end product of the barbecue you're cooking. The Guru will do exactly that. You set the temperature you want it to run at and it will do it all the way through the cook so you are free to do the errands, to go to work, whatever it is, the guru has your back. Number of different models to choose from. And here's what I say. If you want something that control multiple pits, if you want to see the internal temperatures of your meat, CyberQ Wi-Fi is going to be right up your alley. You can connect your smart devices right to the CyberQ Wi-Fi. You can make pit adjustments. Right from there, you can track how it's cooking all the way through the cook. A lot of tech there if you really like that stuff. If you want something that's more like a cruise control, then you want the party queue. It's 150 bucks or so, runs on AA batteries. It's a single compact unit, and you can put it in kettle-style cookers. You can put it in bullet-style cookers. You can put it in ceramic-style cookers. It doesn't matter. It goes from cooker to cooker to cooker. And again, running on AA batteries, you set the temperature, and boom, it's just off and running. It's absolutely spectacular. Easiest point of entry into automatic temperature control devices. The Onyx oven is still available. You know it's going to work seamlessly with all of the Guru temperature control units. Here's what you do. You hit the website, thebbqguru.com, and you check out the products. If you have any questions about what to get, call them directly. Don't guess. Don't screw it up right off the bat. They're going to make sure you're outfitted with exactly what you need to get you up and running right out of the box. Again, the phone number, 800-288-GURU. That's 800-288-GURU. Or you can visit the website, thebbqguru.com. The Barbecue Guru is a breakthrough in barbecue technology. Nick Edwards, out of the break. Stick around. We'll be right back. Get in the smoke. Call 877-448-0433 to get on the air. Now, here's your host, Greg Rampey. All right, welcome back. Clint Cantwell weighing in in the chat room. Imagine how offended LeBron James would be if a Skype gremlin punched him in the balls. We saw how offended he got when human beings punched him in the balls. Skype gremlins might be also banned for Game 5. This segment of the show being brought to you by Unknown Smoker Accessories, purveyors of made-in-the-USA stainless steel barbecue and smoker lid hinges, 
barbecue accessories, rocket hot chimney grillers, and heavy duty aluminum foil dispensers and spice racks. Fine products from unknown smoker accessories. Keep your gear where it needs to be at arm's length, ready for battle. Visit unknownbbq.com slash shop today. That's unknownbbq.com slash shop. And you wanted, you wanted it, you asked for it, you're going to get it. Discount code, enter REMPE, R-E-M-P-E, for 10% off your entire order. Yeah, your entire order. So when you go to unknownbbq.com slash shop, put in promo code REMPE, R-E-M-P-E, you get 10% off your order. You ask, you get. It's just that easy. All right. Uh, my next and final guest this evening, what's all the rage now these days? Subscription services. So it only makes sense that there should be one for the barbecue community. Nick Edwards has brought his solution to market. Let's go ahead and head on over and welcome Nick into the show. Nick, how are you, buddy? Hey, I'm doing great, Greg. How are you? I'm doing absolutely fabulous, Nick. Appreciate you making time for the show tonight. And yeah. uh, so let's start there, right? So. It seems over the last 24 months or so, uh, subscription services, it's uh, like Blue Apron sending you ingredients to make your own dinners at home instead of going to the grocery store, and it's uh, people sending you clothes, and you get to pick what you want out and send what you don't want back, and you pay so much dollars a month for that, and loot crates and all that stuff. So why not, as you probably thought, why not a barbecue subscription service? So. Uh, is that kind of the genesis for you on on barbecuetreat.com or or was it something different? Oh yeah, absolutely. I mean, basically, I mean, it's interesting that you'd bring up the whole blue apron because that's basically how I got the idea for the whole thing. Uh, me and my wife have been blue apron subscribers for probably going on a year plus at this point. Really? Yes, sir. So do you like I mean, I don't want to completely derail, but I I don't have I don't know anybody that's been a blue apron subscriber. So, uh is it totally worth the money? It, it is. It is. But it is. It, it, it's hard. Like during the summertime, if you, if you do a lot of outdoor cooking, they don't currently offer like a whole lot of outdoor recipes. But, I mean, it, it'll definitely up, up your skills because it's different themes, different regions. I mean, um, it, it's actually pretty fantastic. And it's, it's helped my cooking skills a lot. I mean, because I didn't realize how seasoning, how important seasoning was and how much I could do with actually just salt and pepper until I actually got into it and started adjusting. And I mean, it, it's, it's, it's a good service. All right. So blue, blue apron inspires barbecue treat. So you have the idea now, now, how do you figure, okay, this is what the barbecue treat box needs to have every month in order to be successful. Um, well, basically we try to offer just a mix of products each month. Um, like our, our first month is we, um, we're going with Heath Riles and we're talking about the three, two, one method of competition rib cooking, which, most people absolutely know nothing about, surprisingly. I mean, the, the majority of, popula of the population, you know, because our target market is basically backyarders is who we're going after. Um, because there's, there's really not a whole lot of, well, there's no subscription services that are connecting competition cooks with backyard barbecuers that I know of. Is there, do you think there's a connection that needs to be made? I think if you talk to a lot of competition cooks, they'd probably tell you to a man or a woman that what mm -hmm. they're making in the competition scene is nothing like they would make in the backyard. Uh, is this just a, a, a way for them to connect to diff different demographics that they're offering products to the market, more or less? Mm -hmm. Yes. Oh, absolutely. Um, basically, that's the whole idea of the service is we, we want to try to hopefully increase backyarders to give them the skills and confidence to actually up their skills with competition products. Because, I mean, a lot of backyarders have no idea where to start, know, where to, know what to to buy, they go to Walmart, they get stock rubs off the shelf, you know, and a lot of these competition rubs that are really out there that just, you can't get either online or, you know, at a competition itself, or unless you're in the region, you don't have access to. So, I, I mean, we're hopefully using the whole idea that, you know, we're competition judges as well. I'm a KCBS judge is how I started out in barbecue. I've um, been a KCBS judge for about three years now. And um, I have my other friends that are Memphis judges and other KCBS judges, and we all kind of get together, and that's kind of how we decide what products to go in and what kind of themes we want for each month. So how quickly do you go from concept to being able to, to get something out into the market? Um, usually we try to give our vendors about a month lead. Right now we're actually, um, Dave from Butchers, we're actually um, sizing his products for our next box, which is coming out, and it's going to be a brisket theme. 
he's going to tell us a little bit that and we're going to try to put in some of his injections some of his rub and the grilling oils because we don't want to sauce people to death we don't want don't want to hit your bottles of sauce every single month you know um we're going to try to mix it up and just keep it hopefully new products because that's the whole thing is is creativity we want people to see new things and try stuff they've never had before. So uh, the website, by the way, bbqtreat.com, mm -hmm. if you want to check it out. Uh, so there's the subscription side of the service, but then there's also like uh, what I would call a, well, I'm going to say one hitter, and it sounds like I'm a drug yep. addict, but there's uh, like a, a gift uh, a gift basket option uh, as well, right? Yeah, yeah. It's totally, um, it's our gift box option. And right now we're actually running a special for Father's Day. They type in the code Dad's Deal. It's just D-A-D-S-D-E-A-L. And you get 20% off our gift box, which basically knocks it down to the same price our subscription service is. Um, we ship anywhere in the continental United States. Shipping's free. It's included. And you also get 20% off our um, camo aprons that are that are on sale for on the site. So on, on a forecasting schedule, Nick, did you and uh, is it you and your wife that are in the business or is it really just you? Well, it's basically me. I'm, I'm the founder, and then I have about four equity partners that came in with me. Uh, I, I basically went to them and said, hey, they have certain skill sets in different pieces of the market. And um, I said, basically, I don't have any money to give you. I can give you some sweat equity. So they each got a small piece of equity out of business. Uh, so do you plan out the first 12 months right off the bat, or are you mm -hmm. kind of, you know, seat of your pants at this point? Well, no, we're actually planned out to um, past 2017 right now. Um, I can give you our whole lineup actually. Dave is our August box and he's coming up and it's going to be brisket. And then we're actually looking at Blues Hall for September for pulled pork. And then we're looking at Dizzy Pig for October and they're going to do our Oktoberfest box. They've got an um, IPA season in that right now. That's the bomb. Um, then November, um, Killer Hogs, Malcolm Reed. Um, we're going to do a turkey recipe together. And December, that one's still up in the air. I haven't made a final decision on that one yet because I've got a lot of different things in play on that one and I may put a couple guys together but traditionally we try to stick to one pit master and feature strictly their product because I didn't want my vendors to feel like they were competing and I just wanted to theme and feature their products each month you know Nick Edward joining me here on the on the show bbqtreat.com is the website here's an idea end of the year you find mm -hmm. out which if the products that you're getting the best reviews on these end of the year you, mm -hmm. you you kind of include the the you know two or three most popular items in the box and you have like the best of the year box bbqtreat.com i want half that money hey hey there you go man yeah. you're on it yeah no doubt you're on it. i'm all i'm full of great ideas i'll tell you all about them yeah. so uh you, you've launched you're you're ready to go i mean just you know in, in fairly short order so uh, what's the initial reaction like i mean are you you know did you have certain benchmarks right off the bat where you would be able to to track what success is or do you have numbers that you need to hit in order to kind of keep it running? Like, what's that whole business aspect like? I'm always interested in the business side. Well, the business side of it is actually pretty interesting myself. Um, I find it very interesting, too. Um, but basically, our goal is to hit 300 subscribers by hopefully the end of the year. Um, we can generate a certain amount of revenue by the number that we hit. And um, obviously, the bigger our subscription gets, you know, the more tools and assets and people we're going to have to bring in and different things like that. And we've got basically benchmarks for each each plateau we hit. And to hopefully, I'd like to eventually get to the point where we can scale this deal and, you know, make it pretty much a national brand. Do you envision it always being uh, an online situation? I mean, I think a lot of the subscription services that you see, regardless of industry, are, are probably just online stuff for obvious reasons. But do you ever see it going into, like, a store or something like that? Oh, yeah, yeah. Uh, great. I can't talk about everything we got going on, Craig, but... But yeah, we we, def, we definitely got a lot a lot of different tracks open to us. That's for sure. But currently, right now, um, basically, I consider myself a, a backyarder. I don't consider myself a pro pit master or claim to be a good cook at all, really. But basically, I'm hoping to start up a supply and barbecue shop in my own hometown. And the whole deal with that is, a supply and sauce shop's not going to make it where I live at. Basically, I, I live in the middle of nowhere, and. Um, so, but, uh, you know, a supply shop with 300 subscribers is a different story, you know, and, and, and there's a whole different avenues. We also cater and do pop-up events as well. It's, it's, it's a, it's a pretty big business. It's, it's got a lot of different avenues we can go. All right. So you're looking for, uh, potentially 300 subscribers by the end of the year. Um, Hopefully, yes. do you have, 
expectations scale that out through like year two, year three? I mean, do you expect to have, you know, 10,000 by the end of 2018 or, you know, I wonder how the growth looks for you guys. Well, going off what we forecast, we hope to have a um, thousand by year two. Um, you know, we hope to have 300 by the end of this year, thousand by year two, and then hopefully five years out, if we're very fortunate, we're hopefully being in a neighborhood of 10,000 because that a uh, thousand subscribers for us is the break point when this actually becomes real jobs and people start leaving their full-time jobs to actually do this full-time. And at that point, we start outsourcing to a third-party logistics fulfillment center. And um, then that way, we give up a little bit of margin, but we get back our time is the trade-off. And um, go, oh, I thought you were going to ask a question. Sorry. Um, but basically, that's, that's the, the main benchmarks that we have. And then hopefully, we can grow to about 10,000 subscribers. Are you buying or are the vendors that you're working with, are you getting like at a reduced rate and, and they're kind of uh, gain, winning with the promotion of being sent out to people that, that wouldn't normally go and, and seek them out? Mm -hmm. Well, and see, that's part of the whole thing is I, I, I'm trying to create kind of what I call a win-win-win scenario. Basically, the first wins for my customers because they get confidence in a product that's actually brought to them by barbecue judges and people who know what's going on in the world of barbecue, you know. So that way that takes a lot of stress out of them because, you know, you send your wife to the grocery store to buy your barbecue sauce, it's hard to tell what in the heck she's going to come back with, you know. And she's going to spend an hour and a half looking at it. Right. So, <laughs> no offense, ladies, no offense. But um, oh, It's too late for that. They're offended. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, yeah I'm sure. But um, but basically, that's that's the first one is is they have confidence in people who are actually recommending them stuff that's curated by people that know knows what's going on. Our second win is for our vendors because they get you know a good size order. Um, there's no waste. There's no speculation. It is what it is, you know. And then basically, the third win is for me because I get to build a brand and cu customers who have confidence in the brand that they've chosen. All right. So uh, easiest way for people to either get the one time box or sign up for a subscription is uh, bbqtreat.com correct yes sir yes sir all right so if you are interested in getting hooked up with the subscription barbecue service again the website bbqtreat.com uh, it's nick edwards uh, anything else before i let you go nick oh uh, yeah man uh anybody who's out there who wants to just send me an email um any vendors or anybody who's interested in the box just let me know it's just nick at bbqtreat.com very simple straightforward um I hope people enjoy it. Hopefully get some new subscribers out of this. All right. So hopefully we can, uh, you know, shoot you past, well past 300 by the end of the year. Uh, we'll see how it goes. Nick, continued success with bbqtreat.com. We'll talk to you soon. All right. Thank you, sir. You got it. There he is, Nick Edwards. By the way, I did get a uh, first box, like the first send-out box. I probably didn't get the first box. And uh, I have that video. If you go to my YouTube page, um, you can see the video that I did with it. I offered a, a very minor suggestions on, you know, things that might be a little irritating to people when they open the box upside down and the wood chips fall out. But other than that, I mean, to, to open up that initial box, to have Rocky's theme song in my face pumping me up for barbecue box or BBQ treat, and then seeing, like, Heath Ryle's products, he had uh, the, the sauce that I like, uh, the rub, one of my favorite rubs that he's got. And then the butter bath and wrap was also in there. Well worth the money for subscription. So uh, if boxes keep coming like that, obviously you said he's going to be working with Dave Bosca next month or this coming month or whatever it is. So, you know, two boxes right off the bat are going to be worth it. So, uh, again, the website, bbqtreat.com. If you're looking for a gift to give somebody, your dad, for like a whole year subscription thing, I mean, that's what you want to look at. That's, a, that's the other big thing. Like buy subscription services for people – that you are family members with or your best buddy or your wife, whatever. They're becoming very popular. This is a Blue Apron customer right there. You got the, the idea from Blue Apron, as you just said. I've never known anybody that's done Blue Apron, but I thought about it. Man, I hate grocery shopping. I hate it. I mean, I can't hate it more than I hate it, I think. All right, that's Nick Edwards. This is me talking to you about Big Papa Smokers, the one-stop online shop for anyone interested in barbecue, number one dealer Mac pellet grills in the world. Big Papa Smokers features a wide selection of American-made grills and smokers, such as the Old Hickory Ace BP, Gateway Drum Smoker, even a drum kit that gives you everything you need to make a world-class smoker out of a 55-gallon drum. 
Big Pop has also made a name for itself in recent years by handcrafting an award-winning line of championship rubs from flavors like Sweet Money to Happy Ending. Their rubs have had a hand in winning almost every major barbecue competition, period. Don't think that BPS can just be pigeonholed in competitive barbecue either. The rubs have become so well-known they've been picked up by a nationwide restaurant chain called BJ's Restaurant and Brew House. With four of the nine rubs featured on their permanent menu and amid glowing reviews, BPS rubs are proven to be a great addition to anyone's pantry. Big Papa is also banded together with fellow California-based rub company Simply Marvelous Barbecue to form what has now become known as the West Coast Offense. Defying conventional wisdom, these two California-based rub makers have cornered the market on competitive barbecue and begun to redefine the flavor profiles that competitive coaches from across the country have begun to aim for. They also have the online meat locker with top quality meats from Snake River Farms, shipped right to your door. American Kobe beef, the caribou to pork, double R ranch meats. Big Papa's meat locker has something for every type of barbecue aficionado. Big Papa's also created the unique brand ambassador program called the BPS Elite Team, featuring 15 of the best competition teams in the country, working together to promote camaraderie, competition, barbecue, and to benefit children's charities across the U.S. Keep in mind, they've been doing, uh, they've, they've been able to do all of this with only six years of being in business, turning the competition world on its head, providing customers with the very best barbecue products, becoming a staple of a nationwide restaurant chain, and more importantly than any of that, benefiting children's charities across the U.S. Just the beginning for Big Papa Smoke. Just the beginning. All right. We are going to step back, wrap this show, and take off. You want to jump in at the very end? Jump on it. 216-220-0966. Greg at the BBQ Central Show.com. Stick around. Be right back. Big name interviews, advice on cooking brisket and ribs, and the only host willing to share his honest opinion on all things important in the world of barbecue. It's the Barbecue Central Show. All right, welcome back. So far in the voting, the squirrel box... Not the squirrel box. The squirrel segment doesn't seem to be faring too well in the voting. Particularly bad news for the squirrel guy. BarbecueTreat.com has just weighed in the instant chat room saying that there is no squirrel themed box on the horizon either. Bad to worse. Bad to worse. Thanks again to uh, Kevin for coming out. I'm sorry, uh, Nick coming on this past segment. Again, bbqtree.com, his website, if you want to check it out. All right, uh, let's go ahead and close it down, and let's go home. All the way back in the first hour, Max Good, AmazingRibs.com, talked about the 10 best, in his opinion, pellet smokers out there on the market today. Quite a range, by the way. AmazingRibs.com. SeriousEats.com has that particular article. Shared it in the instant chat if you want it. Email me, I'll send it to you, greg at the bbqcentralshow.com. Then in the second hour, George Peters came on through various technical difficulties of Skype gremlins, but we were able to get about uh, seven or eight minutes with him. Recap the flagship product and then talk about the new gas grill option they have for Kettle Pizza, kettlepizza.com, the website, if you want to check it out and purchase. And finally, we talked with uh, Nick Edwards about bbqtreat.com. It's a subscription service. You like subscription services, do ye? Yeah. Then subscribe. Victory Lane, right off the bat, you got Butcher Barbecue coming up next round. Again, bbqtreat.com. All right, that's going to do it. We got no show next week. Remember that? So there'll be some type of replay. We'll be back the week after that. Steven Reichland's going to be in. Number of other great guests that I can't seem to recall right off the top of my head for some unknown reason. But they're, I'm already packed. Four guests in. Great guests. September 11th, 2001. I will never forget. Until next Tuesday at 9 p.m. Eastern Standard Time, this is your program host and proud U.S. American, Greg Rempe. Good night now.
This is Scott Greenia from Fairfax, Vermont, also known as.